Maurice Bernstein founded Giant Step Records, which worked with such distinguished artists as Moby, Sonny Rollins, and Jamiroquai, upon his arrival in the United States from Britain. It did not, however, start out as a business proposition. It was purely for selfish reasons. I wanted to, um, when I moved to America from England about uh, 20 years ago, uh, the artists that I liked were American music artists, and I thought that they would be playing and popular in America but I found out that they weren't, and so I decided to put them on myself. So how does one go about deciding to become a, a, a promoter, an impresario? What does one do? It's like any career. You've got to stick at it. You've got to be persistent, passionate, and also have that sort of sense of naivety where if you really knew how hard things were going to be, then you wouldn't do it. <laughs> and so you started to promote concerts and eventually uh, opened your own label. Right. Uh, started off promoting club nights and concerts and then developed into a management company, a record label, and now we're really just a music and lifestyle marketing company. When you first started out, did you have a plan on, on your career? I thought I did, but again, because I was so naive, it kind of, as things evolved and grew, then I reassessed and moved them on from there. Originally my plan was that I wanted to find groups, sign them to record labels and make a lot of money selling a lot of records. When that kind of changed, then you find other ways of, of doing things. Has there been anyone that you, you looked up to or used as a model? When I started my company, uh, I thought the Virgin brand, Richard Branson, what he had done with his brand uh, was very much something that I looked up to. Because whatever he put his brand to had a quality level. So. He started off by having record shops, quality record shops, then a quality record label. Then he decided to start an airline company, mm -hmm. but you went with that airline company because of the quality and the experience that came from it. And my other one is uh, uh, Alex Ferguson, the manager of Manchester United, just because of his drive and his passion. And because and, you are yourself are from Manchester. And I am from Manchester, and his success as well. And that's something to look at, how he manages people, how he works with people, and how he can be very ruthless with people as well. So, yeah. Is that also something you learned, how to be ruthless? You have to be, yeah. Your company does a lot of black music, and there seems to be a vein of Jewish promoters who are doing wonders for black music. Is that something that, is, that has inherent reasons, or is it just a coincidence? Throughout pop, I mean, Gershwin, Orgy and Bess, a Jewish composer. Jewish composer writing. Porgy and Bess was an African American opera. opera. West Side Story, Leonard Bernstein. Bernstein. Al Jolson. Some people thought that what Al Jolson did was, was actually nice. derogatory. And some people see the relationship with Jews and African American musicians as negative and positive. You look at the Brill Building, people like Carol King and Jerry Goffin, who wrote a lot of the hits for the Drifters. There's been an interrelation, interaction between the two races musically for a long, long time. It's still continuing? Oh, yeah, very looking? much so. Like, very can you give some examples? Uh, well, a lot of the heads of record companies are <laughs> Jewish. A lot of the big managers are Jewish. Do you feel that in any way your uh, Jewish background informs what you do? Did you bring something of the Jewish point of view into your career? It definitely influences your background. It influences who you are. Um, I was brought up in Manchester, England, but with a very Jewish awareness. Being Jewish to me is not sort of like bagels and cream cheese and smoked what salmon. Is it, then? Um, it is um, a sense of tradition, a sense of knowing where you're from, a sense of your history how you got to where you are, understanding that, well, your family didn't live, my family didn't live in England for hundreds of years, like most of the people who I grew up with in England, why they had come to England, why, why they had to leave where they were, why we did certain things, why we ate certain foods, why we didn't do certain things on certain days. Being different, being a minority in a country, that's why New York is kind of, it's kind of a weird experience when you first come here because it's the first time outside of when you have an experience of being in Israel that you're actually not in the minority. Were you very much aware of that when you arrived? 
Well, yeah, you kind of like, you know, on the TV, you go, and happy Hanukkah. <laughs> now, that, you would never, I would never have heard that in England on the television, them saying, happy Hanukkah to all our Jewish. You know, that, that just wasn't something that you had. So, you, you it's, you're comfortable. It's like, it's a comfortable place to be as a Jew. You're not, you don't feel like you're in a minority. So in what way do all these sensibilities inform your career? It took him to me, for example, that you did do some work with older musicians from the 70s and so forth. Right, forward. very much so. And community. Community? Yeah, uh, I feel I built a community. Uh, Giant Step, I feel, is a community. It's a brand, it's a community. It's something that people feel a part of and enjoy interacting with, and that's something I learned from my Judaism. And knowing where you're from helps you move forward. That's very, very important with anything you do. It, it, it's helped me have the confidence to make informed decisions.